Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Palin Test webinar. My name is Neil Young, and now I should hand you over to Hannah. Thank you, Neil. So just to keep everyone on the same page, we'll start with a quick recap of how photometry works, and then we'll move on to the main meat of today's webinar. The basis of how a photometric test works is that you add reagent to your sample, they make it change colour, and then you read this colour change using a photometer, which will give you an idea of the water quality. And that's represented in that um, schematic at the top. But how does a photometer work? Well, they measure the amount of light that makes it through the, a sample to the detector. The darker the colour of the sample, the less light will make it through to the detector. Initially, all wavelengths of light come out of the light source, and these are reduced to a single wavelength using an optical filter. And then that single wavelength is what hits the detector at the end. This is like a counter, and it counts the photons that hit it. The amount of light that hits the detector is known as the percent T or the percentage of light that is transmitted from the light source to the detector. The instrument measures the percent T through the sample in comparison to the blank. The blank is the sample without any reagents in it. Light passing through a glass tube of water will behave very differently to light passing through air and that's why it's important to use a reagent free sample as a blank. So once we have the percent T, we need to convert it into something meaningful, something we want to use. So here is a typical calibration curve. This one here is for free chlorine testing using DPD. The percent T value is converted to a milligrams per litre concentration using the calibration curve, and this readout is displayed on the instrument. In the example here, 43% T is equivalent to one milligram per litre of free chlorine. This calibration is determined in our labs and is stored on the instrument memory. So all the user will see is the displayed reading. All the calculation happens behind the scenes, so to speak. So as we said at the beginning, both myself and Neil have worked in technical support at Palin Test for a number of years and have seen a few of the same questions come up. So we've devised a two-part checklist, which looks at the instrument and equipment firstly, and then the reagents and method to puzzle through any issues that you are experiencing. This two-part checklist can be done by you and help to ensure that you get the best results possible from your Palin test equipment. So let's get into the checklist. The first thing we always check when a query comes in is the method and the reagents. There are a few things that we've spoken about in previous webinars, like making sure that you use in-date reagents and ensuring you use them in the correct order where necessary. But this is our tech support checklist, and these are the first things that we try when a query comes in. What I'll give you is our top three things to check when carrying out a photometer. So the first is to follow method carefully. One of the key things is making sure you adhere to any stand time instructions. The stand time is what allows the chemical reaction to occur and the color, color to fully develop and helps to ensure that you get the best results. On the larger photometers, there is a timer option you can use, although a stopwatch or phone app would work just as well. Another to consider is crushing. The crush rods have a teardrop shape to the end that can be used to break the tablet up initially without having to put too much pressure on the tube wall. It's important to ensure that the tablet is fully crushed as this releases the chemicals from the tablet into the sample and allows the reaction to take place. Any uncrushed tablet will affect the reading, so it's important to both crush and mix effectively. A final thing that we need to consider when doing a test is the blank. So I did mention this a little bit before. The blank needs to be your sample without any reagents added in a clean test tube. This is used to tell the instrument what the sample looked like before you added the reagents, so it knows how much much adding the reagents has changed the percent T value and what effect that colour change has had. It's important to do the blank with each sample you do to get the best results. Once you've checked the reagents and the method, the next thing to do is look at the instrument itself and also the equipment that you're using. Now, Neil's going to expand quite a bit on this with looking at check standards, but there are a couple of things you might want to also consider first. So we'll dive right in with the biggest of them, and that is cleaning. Photometers, as I said before, work by measuring how much light hits the detector, but that isn't going to work very well if there are bits of dust and dirt in the optic path. So the first thing to do is make sure you have a good cleaning regime. The frequency you should clean will vary depending on how much you use your instrument and how dirty it gets, but we would suggest that you clean the inside monthly at least. 
To do this with a compact, you just use some anti-static foam and a lint-free cloth to clean the space you put the tubes in. But for one of our larger instruments, like a 7500, 7100, or a pool test 9, 10, or 25, then you need to remove the base plate. And this is on the bottom, and it needs to be unscrewed. So after you've unscrewed it, cleaned it, and after cleaning, make sure you screw it back securely in place to preserve the IP67 waterproofing. Related to cleaning is the care of your equipment, and that's really your cross rods and your test tubes. Any scratches or damages on the tube will affect the reading quite significantly. So it's important to make sure that your tubes are free of scratches, fingerprints, and bubbles. We advise that you would check your tubes weekly and replace any that have any damage to them. This is also a great time to ensure that there is no cross contamination. Cross contamination can be a real issue that will mess up your results. Any discoloration of rods or tubes shows that they are likely contaminated with chemicals from a previous test. Best practice is to wash these weekly in a weak detergent solution. And it's important to ensure that you rinse these properly and dry them before you store them. Same goes for any crush rods. We would advise you replacing anything that is still discoloured after you've cleaned it. And with that, I'll hand it back to Neil. Thank you, Hannah. Well, now it's back to me and I'm going to briefly run through check standards, what they are and what they are not, how you use them and what they tell you. And I'll explain the differences between the two types of check standards we supply. So, Picture yourself doing some tests with your photometer and you start to wonder for one reason or another if it is reading correctly. How can you find out? Well, you could send your instrument back to us for a service and recalibration. But unless you have a backup, and let's face it, who does, you'll be without your instrument for a week. And when we send it back to you, if you are still getting those unexpected results that led to you having doubts, then you'll know that a week ago your photometer was fine and those high readings really were high. You could instead prepare a known solution of whatever it is you are testing for. For example, if you are doing ammonia testing, you make up a one milligram per litre solution of ammonia. However, this is not an easy thing to do. And the result you get on your photometer may tell you how well your photometer is reading, or it may tell you how good you are at making up one milligram per litre solutions of ammonia. The easier option by far is to use check standards. To explain what a check standard is, I need you to recall how earlier Hannah explained how a photometer shines light through the sample and measures the percentage of light being transmitted to it. It then uses its internal software to convert that percentage of transmitted light into your result. So all you need in order to check that the photometer is working is something that you can place in the sample holder for which you already know how much light passes through. For example, if you had something that allowed 50% of light to pass through, you could place it in the photometer, press read, and if you get a result close to 50%, you know that your instrument is working just fine. And that is exactly what a check standard is. Now, we supply two types of check standard. And first, I'm going to talk about liquid colour standards. These are small sealed vials of coloured liquid. The liquid has been formulated so that for any particular wavelength of light, it has a known percentage transmission value, referred to as the percent T. The percent T is shown on the certificate. Each coloured vial can be used to check two wavelengths. So a six wavelength instrument, like the photometer 7500 or pool test 25, will need three coloured standards and a blank to check all six wavelengths. The blank is this clear colourless solution, usually labelled standard A, and the instrument uses this as its reference of what 100% transmission is. The certificate that is supplied with a set of check standards tells you which standard to use for each wavelength and the value that it should read. They can be used by selecting transmittance from the test menu and reading their percent T values on the photometer. Just blank and read as if doing a normal test. But to make it easier still, all Palin test multi-parameter photometers have a check standard mode. This makes it easy to input the values on the certificate into the memory of the instrument. Then each time you run the check standards through, you don't need to refer to the certificate. 
the instrument already knows the values and tells you whether it has passed or failed on each wavelength. It then displays an on-screen report. Now, the other type of check standards that Palin tests supply are neutral density filters, or NDFs for short. Neutral means that they absorb the same percentage of light at all wavelengths, and so they have no color. In these holders are flat pieces of smoky looking glass. NDF standards are what we supply for use with our compact photometers. Because they are flat glass, NDFs have to be positioned at exactly 90 degrees to the light beam. So this notch in the cell holder ensures that the standards are always located correctly. To use NDF standards, simply select the test listed on the certificate. In this example, let's assume it's alkalinity. The instrument will read the NDF standard exactly the same as if it were a real sample and convert the percent T to an alkalinity reading, which you can then check on the certificate. Now, I did promise that I would tell you what check standards are not, and that is that neither of the two types of standard that I've described are calibration standards. We never refer to them as calibration standards because it is not possible to calibrate photometers using them. Photometer calibration is carried out in our instrument laboratory and is a specialized operation using larger sets of specially prepared standards. Now, Palin test color standards have always proved very popular with our customers. They are easy to understand in, the, in that they more closely resemble the samples being tested. Being in round sealed tubes means that they will work in any orientation to the light beam. However, they tend to have a shorter shelf life and some of the chemicals used have in recent years been classed as hazardous. As they are sealed, this is not a problem when using them. However, care is needed when disposing of them at end of life. Traceability to national standards needs to be established after manufacture, which we do by referencing them against the spectrophotometer that has itself been calibrated using fully traceable standards. With NDFs, the special glass filter material is expensive to source, and it can be easier to damage if the special coating on the filter material gets scratched. We minimize this risk by supplying them in our own specially designed holders. The filter material used by Palin Test has full certification and traceability from the original manufacturer and is supplied to us with sample spectral traces. The shelf life is more than twice that of liquid color standards and none of the materials used are hazardous. Palin Test are unique in supplying NDF check standards for photometers and feedback from our customers is that they much prefer to use them. And as always, we are listening to that feedback. So I hope that gives you a useful overview of our photometer check standards. And now I'll just summarize what Hannah and I have covered. Now, Hannah started by going through some checks to carry out on reagents and then how to ensure that you are using them correctly. Then moved on to look at some of the other equipment being used before considering the photometer itself. Now, the photometer often becomes the focus of attention because it is the device that has displayed the result. But like the Roman messenger, please do not blame the photometer if it displays a result you don't like. The performance of the photometer is often the easiest of these things to verify, and that is by using check standards. Well, thank you for taking time to attend this webinar.